ladies and good afternoon, actually. Um, the, uh, the, the mothers from Diamond Mothers um, said that you know, if they breastfed their babies, then they would be smart as Dr. Kiyopo. <laughs> um, the interesting thing was that as they were walking off, Dr. Kiyoko then looked at me. It's a little bit worrying. He looked at me and he says, oh, they were real babies. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. It, it really is an honor to be, um, to be hosting you here today. So, so many of you at the launch of uh, this year's World Breastfeeding Week. Um, it was just traditionally really been marked uh, globally between the 1st and the 7th of August for the last 25 years. Uh, the theme that's been selected this year is, is very timely, breastfeeding at work, let's make it work. And it, it really couldn't be more timely because with more women in formal employment expressing their desire to be able to balance motherhood and career, However, despite the gains that we've made in educating girls and in uh, supporting their ascent in careers which have previously been dominated by men, we now see very many women either choosing not to return to work after getting their babies or settling for minimal careers so they can spend more time with their, their newborns. And the negative effect of this really goes beyond simply career growth and company performance. It goes to the very children that we all work so very hard to support. According to the Global Nutrition Report, which was published in 2014, an estimated 40% of Kenyan children under the age of five in low-income areas suffer from malnutrition, or at least undernutrition. And this makes it more than a health problem. It's a social and development problem that needs to be addressed through collaboration between the public and the private sector, as well as the development partners and civil society. And I feel strongly that this is a, this is a statistic that could change if we took another look at our policies governing maternity leave, breastfeeding in the workplace, and flexible working for new mothers. You know, women shouldn't be forced to choose between having a successful career and being a good mom. My mother didn't have to choose. She actually led a very successful career, and she was a good mom. I would like to say, as is evidenced. From, <laughs> let me finish the sentence. As is evidenced from my sister. Uh, having a child or children really should not lower a woman's chances of advancing her career because the workplace is friendlier to women, to men, than it is to women. Or indeed, it's friendlier to women who don't have children. Diversity and inclusion in the workplace goes beyond increasing the number of women in your company or your organization. Real diversity and inclusion can't ignore the fact that women's needs in the workplace are different from those of men. You don't have to be that clever to figure that bit out. You can't ignore the needs of a person who brings life into this world. And Safaricom has, has been said several times today, and we've shown some of you, we've taken some steps to ensure that these needs are met, really, from increasing the maternity leave from the statutory three months to four months, to providing facilities that benefit and allow women who return to work after their maternity leave to thrive in the workplace. We like to take pride in the fact that we believe we're doing something to increase the population of Kenya. Uh, we have very many, very many of our women who are thriving because they can feel comfortable after having given birth. In 2010, we opened our crash at the Jumbo Call Center. Uh, Dr. Um, this is where we have our call center. And now we've opened one here. Actually, we've been open here for about two years or so. Um, 
and the mothers can bring their children to work, as you see, uh, and, uh, and breastfeed them just like they would at home in a comfortable space. I often say it's astonishing that we still think it's, uh, in the 21st century, we still think it's okay to ask a mother to express or to breastfeed in the toilet. Uh, how can that ever be civilized in today's, in today's world? For those who chose to leave their children at home that are still breastfeeding, we have the mother's room. Again, we saw that. It's a very comfortable place uh, where not only can they express, but also they can store the milk. And as you heard just now, it can last up to eight hours, much more than formula milk. Now, we hope that the conscious decisions that we have made to improve the environment and we provide for our working mothers will make us stand out as one of the best companies to work for. But actually, um, the truth is that wasn't why we did it. And the question was asked by one of the journalists earlier, of, you know, what is the impact on, um, on attrition rates or churn? You know, are we able to retain our working mothers? I, honestly, I don't know and I don't care. Because I didn't do it for that reason. Uh, I, 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 I mean, HR will probably tell me whether we have a higher churn rate or not. I did it because it's just the right thing to do. It's, it's that simple. I have a few children, and I love them dearly, but in, indeed, I love these children as much as I love my own children, no more and no less. And because in Sisyphalica, we take a position on child rights, it's, um, you know, it's not a corporate thing, it's not a PR thing. It's just that the rights of the child was enshrined in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child way back, I think it's 20 years, 21 years, something like that. Uh, and I was in Stockholm talking to the, uh, the guest, guest of the um, royal family. And uh, the theme was child rights, do we know and do we care? And I said that, no, I don't think we do, and I don't think we do care, because if we did, more companies would do what Savannah comes doing today. Um, sometimes we're almost embarrassed, and we're really proud to be able to show you what we're doing today. We're almost embarrassed, because we shouldn't have to be celebrating Savannah for doing this. Every company should be doing it. And you don't have to have a crash. Actually, you know, there's small companies that don't, can't afford to do that. Let's, let's be honest about it. But you can provide an environment for mothers to breastfeed or to express. And you can provide some facilities if it really doesn't cost that much money. But what it costs is that you should care. So I, I would like to, again, welcome you. I've been sitting for a little while, and uh, even the children have been very well behaved. Um, I'd like to, to thank you for giving us an opportunity for hosting this today, and I'd like to now invite Dr. Kyoko to uh, come up and make some remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is a very wonderful day, isn't it? Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to acknowledge um, the CEO of Safaricom, Bob Colliver. Um, uh, Graham from uh, UNICEF. I'm also seeing uh, my friend from the World Bank. Uh, welcome. Uh, and also um, the uh, Grace, uh, was it, uh, what was her name? From uh, FKE. FKE, uh, Lorraine Oyumbe. And uh, Gloria and the the chair of devolution planning uh, at Capsan, and all the distinguished uh, guests who are in attendance today, uh, the mothers who have moved uh, me this morning, the diamond uh, mothers. I am very happy that uh, Bob was able to pick my emotions <laughs> and uh, I was actually deeply touched by the messages that were actually uh, brought out uh, um, this uh, morning. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Dr. Jackson Kyoko uh, uh, from the Ministry of Health and I'm here to represent uh, the Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Mr. James Masharia, who could not uh, be able to be with us because of other pressing uh, official functions. Uh, but nevertheless, 
uh, as uh, what uh, Gladys has said, uh, we will move uh, on with the functions, and I can see it's a function which is well attended. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. It is one of the functions uh, I've seen uh, with every media coverage. I don't know what Bob has done, what trick you done, <laughs> but today it is one of uh, the best uh, functions covered by our good friends uh, from the Fourth Estates. Um, I'm glad to be associated uh, with them. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think before I go through the uh, cabinet's uh, speech, uh, allow me just to make a few uh, remarks. Uh, one is, is about um, the safari code. I think we are here today, uh, our being here today is, is a demonstration uh, of a strong uh, partnership and collaboration that the Ministry of Health has advocated, uh, the public-private partnership. It's a new initiative uh, that we all want uh, to have it on board because it is a driving force that is going to make things happen in this country. Uh, we've relied a lot on the public sector, but I think it's a high time uh, we also bring off our friends, uh, our partners uh, in the private world uh, to come and also support uh, what the public sector is doing. And I'm happy. Uh, and I want to applaud Bob and, and his team and the Safari Group company, I think for the good work you're doing. It is very commendable. Other organizations need to emulate uh, exactly what you are doing. Uh, when I was coming in, I was saying, really, this is my very first time to enter the gates of Safaricon. I've never been inside here. I know the security here is very tight, and I know Bob told me it is very tight. He actually assured me. Uh, but little did I know that there is a lot that happens um, inside here extraordinary work that goes inside here. Um, I do know that there is such a functional clinic uh, uh, that takes care of the health workers' welfare. And then the crazy and the mother uh, baby friendly uh, atmosphere that we have witnessed this morning, ladies and gentlemen, this is great work. It is something that I was asking myself. This if this can be done in 100% of all the companies that are like Safaricom, or if not like Safaricom, near Safaricom, not the very small one, then this world, this Kenya, is going to be a changed country. That was what was going in my mind. I told my people, definitely this can happen. And it is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. I want to applaud uh, Safaricom, therefore, because you are actually not only champions uh, in telecommunications, but have also become champions in advocating uh, the high impact interventions uh, for public health um, uh, impacts. And, and we are very proud of you. The good work you are doing for maternal, for child health. The other day we were not just discussing about Ebola, the Ebola virus. At its peak, we were discussing. And now, thank you for the good work you've done. We did not have a single case uh, in this country. And I know many other uh, 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 platforms that we are going to be together. Uh, to me, this is, is the way to go. I was just looking at um, the World Breastfeeding Day it came into being almost uh, near a quarter century ago. But I was asking myself, if actually the theme of today's, of, of this year's World Breastfeeding Day, a week, came 20 years ago, the theme itself, breastfeeding and work. Breastfeeding and work. If it came as uh, 25 years ago, where will we be as a country? What we have seen is that with the increase in breastfeeding rates, which has moved from, actually it has almost doubled, from 31% to almost uh, above 60%, this is very commendable. And again, also a co uh, almost a corresponding decline in the infant and the child mortality. This is good. Imagine if this, what we are doing today, we did it 25 years ago. Where would we be as a country? We'll be saying that at least we have actually attained some of the Millennium Development Goals, which is very good. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not too late. 
it is possible, isn't it? It is not too late, it is possible, and I believe we are going to take it from here and move forward. The mother, the child, they are very important pillars in a family. We cannot ignore them. Any organization, institution that is ignoring that, uh, I think uh, uh, we need to think about that. Ladies and gentlemen, and allow me to go through the, the, what uh, the CS was to, uh, to share with you uh, uh, this, uh, during this uh, function. It is my great pleasure uh, to welcome you all today as we join the rest of the world to mark the 2015 uh, World Breastfeeding Week here at Michael uh, Joseph Center. Your presence here, ladies and gentlemen, is an expression uh, of your commitment and dedication to protecting, promoting, and supporting breastfeeding, which is vital to the growth and health of our babies. The very foundation of healthy and productive Kenya uh, in achieving Vision 2030. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Breastfeeding Week uh, started in 1991 by WHO UNICEF and the World Alliance for Breastfeeding uh, Actions. It is now implemented in more than 80 uh, countries uh, in the world uh, in order to promote, and to support, and to protect uh, breastfeeding. This event is marked every year uh, on the very first week uh, of August from 1st to 7th. Um, and the reason why uh, we did not uh, mark this event on, the, on, on, fa on first, which was on Saturday, uh, is because, as you all know, we were also having the national launch uh, for the polio campaign, which is also ongoing. So, and Kenya, therefore, is committed to this global obligation uh, as demonstrated uh, by the significant increase in exclusive breastfeeding rates. Uh, in the past five years, exclusive breastfeeding rates have increased uh, from 32% uh, in 2008 uh, to 61% in 2014, uh, among children less than six months, as demonstrated uh, in the latest Kenya Demographic and Health Survey. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our objective this year is to galvanize the multi-international support from all sectors to enable women everywhere to combine work and breastfeeding. Just like what Boba said, uh, uh, it, it actually possible it can be done. Um, whether a, woman, a woman is working in the formal, non-formal, or home seat setting, it is necessary that she is empowered in claiming her, her, her and baby's rights to breastfeed. I just imagine where most of us have come from. And when the mothers who are here actually are making their skits, I imagined that woman who has to go to till the land out there and she has a newborn baby. Two months, and then maybe the, the farm is, is far away from the, the, the house. What happens? I remember a situation one day in the village when a woman actually went to till her land with her newborn and she had to put this baby somewhere very safe under a shed, under a shed somewhere, only to come back just to find a snake that is very well called next to the baby. And it was okay. The snake was okay. The baby was okay. <laughs> Have you seen such situations where you see such mamas in the villages, those of you who come from the villages, you keep a baby outside there and you see a cat just comes and missing next to it? Yeah, or a dog? It happens. These are some of the saddening situations uh, that we witness. But again, it is actually breastfeeding at work, isn't it? Yeah, that's breastfeeding at work. In this regard, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to urge all the employers and families uh, to be uh, more uh, baby and more friendly uh, by providing adequate time, space, and support for mothers to continue breastfeeding and expressing milk when they return to work. Moreover, the immediate health and, and career benefits to the mother and the child in ensuring workplace breastfeeding is friendly is a smart investment. 
the proven benefits have already been mentioned, but I also want to align them here, uh, includes the high return on investment, as Bob can attest to that, and a more productive workforce, uh, an increase in loyalty, and reduced staff turnover. I'm glad that uh, Bob was not motivated uh, to do so because of the staff, staff turnover. Today, we are witnessing a true uh, mother support centre at Safaricom, uh, one of its kind uh, in this country, uh, by Safaricom, who are actually very keen in embracing global and national efforts towards good health uh, for mothers and their children. There are also many other organizations that are doing the same uh, uh, in this country, and I wish uh, to recognize uh, these institutions, the Kenya Red Cross and Nairobi, uh, the IMC and Nairobi, and the Fidley Tea Farm in Kericho, Osserian Flower Farm in Naivasha, uh, Karen Roses Flower Farm in Kribatek, um, and the National Bank uh, in Nairobi, and I wonder why there are not so many banks here. Uh, we need to see more banks. Isn't it? We have more women in that bank, in those banks, and we need to see more of them. And then the Kenya Women uh, Finance Trust. I therefore also urge all other sectors and, and other institutions to emulate this organization in order to scale up these initiatives and to liaise with the ministry uh, for further support uh, and collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, and the Ministry will continue to provide policies and guidelines uh, and to promote uh, appropriate infant feeding. Today, we are also launching guidelines to help employers, families, communities to support mothers to breastfeed. Allow me to acknowledge the overwhelming support uh, that we have received as a ministry from the development partners and the private sector for their financial and technical support, with special appreciation uh, to Safaricom for hosting us uh, today. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, um, you would therefore agree uh, with me that investing in health of our infant and children through breastfeeding is investing in the future of our families, communities, and the whole country. And this is a key step towards achieving our vision in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my humble pleasure and duty to officially launch uh, this year's World Breastfeeding Week and also uh, launch the guidelines for supporting the working mothers. Thank you very much and God bless. Yeah.